So welcome back to module number seven. It's the last module in the Real Relief for Sleep course. And it's not any new information, but it's all about helping you take what you've learned and put it into action. So it's called your implementation plan. And we're just gonna quickly cover three different sections. Firstly, we'll talk about three easy options to implement this learning. Secondly, the quick sleep improvement guide. And then we're gonna have a wrap up and talk about some resources. So here's a question for you. How do you improve your sleep? How do you think you should improve your sleep? Well, the answer is make sure you implement the learning. You actually, you've learned all the information about how to improve your sleep, but now you actually need to put it into action. And we just want to remind you of all the benefits of sleep. Okay, it's going to help improve your energy and motivation. You're going to have better concentration, improved mood, and better mood stability, less irritability and frustration. It's going to help reduce your blood pressure, help you lose weight, protect against heart disease, and stroke prevention as well. So it's super important that you do implement what we've learned because you're here for a reason, right? And remember, we talked in module number one in the introduction about why you were here. Maybe it was to improve your concentration and so that you could improve your work and your studies. Maybe it was so that you were a better parent or a better friend, um, had more patience and more energy to be with those that you loved. Or maybe you just want to feel better. Maybe you just want to have better mood and better energy. Or you just want your body to work better and you know that if you sleep better, you're going to perform better. Well, remember those reasons when it comes to implementing. You're worth, you're worth it. Your sleep is, is worth improving. So take the time and energy and financial um, resources to improve your sleep. So here's three easy options that I've come up with to help you implement this learning. Okay, firstly, just work through your workbook. Now that you're familiar with all the content, when you work through the workbook and all the checklist, it's going to help you identify the areas that you can work on further. Okay, so as I said, it's got lots of comprehensive checklists. I've done this myself with, with my, my daughter. It doesn't um, sleep so well and it's improving all the time. The other thing you could do is focus on one area at a time. Okay, we know that these eight root causes of poor sleep, and you could just go through and go, oh, I need to look at medication. I need to look at nutritional deficiencies. I've done the bedroom environment and light exposure before, but I haven't worked on my diet very well. Or maybe you know you're a stressor or, not, or your hormones are out of balance. Maybe you feel like you've tried everything and that's why you need to look into food intolerances. So just decide which one you're going to do. And you could use, um, you know, the questions to consider that we've worked through, through the, um, the content, through the modules. And you could just go back and review those answers and it could highlight the area that you need to start with first. There you go. I'm ahead of myself because I've got so much good things to say. So review your questions. <laughs> All right. And thirdly, you could follow our quick sleep improvement guide. All right. So I've put this together to make it easy for you. So let's cover off that quick sleep improvement guide now. Okay. So in the quick sleep improvement guide, we're going to go over your routine your supplements, medical considerations, your bedroom, your lights, and your diet too. And what I recommend is that you choose two or three strategies for each of these sections. Okay. Remember, to get a good night's sleep, we need to support our circadian rhythms and not work against them. I told you this in module number one in the introduction that we need routine and consistency in our lives, remember? So we need to be consistent every day to, to teach 
our circadian rhythm and teach our body what to do all right to wake up at the right times of the day and go to sleep at the right times of the day so the first consideration with your routine is implement the consistent bedtime and wake up times remember we in introduction in the introduction we talked about calculating when you should what time you well deciding what time you want to wake up calculating how much sleep you should be getting and working backwards and deciding on a consistent bedtime okay number two i want you to stop rushing during the day all right take some breaks to de-stress maybe do some exercise some journaling or set some fewer commitments so you have more time to yourself Turn off or dim your lights two hours before bed. The other thing when it comes to routine is stop watching screens two hours before bed. Or if you don't want to do that, you could download and use a blue light app on your phone, your computer or TV, and reduce the brightness on your phone as well. And if you don't want to do that, you could wear amber sunglasses in the evening from two to three hours before you go to bed. All right. Never stop working and stop doing any stimulatory activities to at least two hours before bed. All right. And create yourself a one hour wind down sleep routine. Okay. Some examples of what you can include in this routine is um, slow down and use mindless chores. Um, there's your teeth routine. You can wash, have a shower, get changed into your PJs, you can journal, you can do some stretching like we did, have, give yourself a little massage, do some reading or breathing or mindfulness. Okay, so there's six different options and if you're following through in your workbook, you can um, review them now. So let's just pause and I want to ask you, what two to three strategies will you prioritize when it comes to your routine? Okay, well, once you've finished deciding what two or three strategies you're going to prioritize, let's move on. And remember that there's a sleep inducing system and the hyper arousal system. Okay. And we need to improve the sleep inducing system, but reduce those things that are going to, that are winding you up. Okay. And we can remember that we can influence these pathways using specific supplements. So let's talk about supplements now. Okay. So, my suggestion is you choose two to four supplements. Magnesium is really the minimum, but it's essential, okay? Potassium, you could consider if you're intolerant to exercise or if you have a lot of heart palpitations or restless legs. Ashwagandha and um, phosphatate or serine is really good if you're stressed out or anxious. Remember about those um, improving melatonin and, and lowering the, the um, hyperarousal system. This is where you are lowering that cortisol. Ashwagandha and phosphatidyl serine are good at lowering that cortisol. Chaseberry or natural progesterone can be used if you have cyclical insomnia and PMS um, and PMDD. GABA is another supplement um, that you can use if you're anxious or if you have cyclical insomnia. And finally, you can consider melatonin. Okay, so melatonin is going to help improve the sleep inducing system. Okay. So let's stop and review that list. What two to four supplements will you trial? Are your hormones out of balance? Maybe try some progesterone or chaseberry. Do you have heart palpitations and restless legs? Potassium. Everyone should be on magnesium. 
Or maybe you need a control of stress levels and cortisol. Try some ashwagandha and phosphatine or stearine. But let's just review and say which ones are likely to be the most important for you. You can either pause this video to take some more time or let's move on and discuss the medical. So what I want you to do is review your medication and supplement checklists. All right. So Make sure there's no medication or supplements that are affecting your sleep, either just through lots of different mechanisms or through affecting your histamine levels. And so look in the checklist in under module number one and module number six, so the food intolerances section. Secondly, do you have a health condition associated with poor sleep? So do you have sleep apnea? Do you have restless legs? Do you have pain? Do you have anxiety or depression? Or do you have food, um, sorry, hormonal imbalances? If you have any of those, review um, how you can manage them and review the tests that I've recommended and maybe some supplements too. Thirdly, get some blood tests done. So vitamin D is at a minimum. So everybody should getting, be getting a vitamin D test. Okay, um, there were some recommendations for people with restless legs. Okay, and um, yeah, and also for some people, hypothyroidism is what you need to check out too. And lastly, talk to your doctor about sleep apnea if you have any of the symptoms. All right, so that was um, that was if you well the the risk factors were if you're overweight, have high blood pressure have a large neck or constricted airways and symptoms are if you're waking up gasping in the middle of the night. Okay. So let me ask you, do you need to consider medications, health conditions or deficiencies? Okay. So review those lists and write down in the workbook which areas you need to prioritise. Right. again So remember how we talked about the sleep-wake system and how it's regulated by two major processes, the sleep-inducing system and the hyper-arousal-inducing system. Well, what we want to do is work on these to improve the sleep system and lower the arousal or the, you know, the awake, the alert system. Okay. We can influence these by using different supplements. Okay. So let's talk about what supplements you could consider. So I recommend that you choose between two to four supplements. So you're not completely overloaded, <laughs> okay? But magnesium is the mere minimum, okay? I suggest that you try two, not just one, but if you only want to try one um, supplement, it should be magnesium. You could also consider potassium if you're intolerant to exercise or have restless legs or have heart palpitations. 
ashwagandha and um, and phosphatidylserine is really good for anyone that's stressed out or anxious. Now, these these supplements are going to help with lowering that hyper arousal system. All right. Chaseberry or natural progesterone can be used for anyone with hormonal imbalances that are leading to cyclical insomnia or PMS or PMDD. GABA is important and helpful for anyone with anxiety and anyone with cyclical insomnia because of hormonal imbalances. And the last one you could try is melatonin, right? So let me ask you, what two to four supplements will you try? Now, write that down in your workbook right now. Now let's look at the medical area for a minute and let's just go through a few things that you should be considering. So firstly I want you to review the medication and supplementation checklist. The supplements and meds that can affect your sleep and you'll find those not only in module, sorry number, it's not number one, sorry about that, it's module number four um, and module number six, all right? And my question to you is also, do you have any health conditions associated with poor sleep? So we spoke about them in module number four, and that is sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, pain, anxiety and depression, and hormonal imbalances. So if you have a health condition, I would say you should address that first. Okay, it's high priority. And so I've given you some recommendations in module number four. People also need to get their vitamin D tests at a minimum, okay, but there's other tests that can be helpful. There's a list for people with restless legs and um, hypothyroidism is one that you also want to rule out. And review the symptoms and risk factors for sleep apnea and get tested for sleep apnea if you have them. So remember um, the risk factors are being overweight, having high blood pressure, having large um, a large neck and constricted airways. You might wake up in the night gasping for air or waking up with a dry throat in the morning and a headache okay, and not being able to sleep through the night. So if you've got any of those symptoms or risk factors, talk to your doctor about sleep apnea. So my question that I want you to consider and write in the workbook now is do you need to consider medications? Are you on them? Do you have any health conditions or is it likely that you have some deficiencies? And which ones do you need to concentrate on? You may need to pause this video and go and look in, under module number four and look at your questions that you've considered or looked at the checklist um, in the workbook to be able to answer this question further. But you can either pause this video now or do that, um, but once you've answered this question, let's move on. So remember, sleep is a very vulnerable state to be in, okay? We're, we're all good now, now curled up in our bed, um, in, in our houses, but in the past, we were more vulnerable. And, and different people can be in different vulnerable situations in their life. But you just got to make remember to make sure that your bedroom environment is as safe and as restful as possible. So here's a few things to consider. As I said, this is the implementation plan. So one, you can make your room and bed, bed a more restful and comfortable environment. So think about your blankets for your bedroom, your sheets, your pillow. Um, how old your bed is, think about the colours that are in your room and the um, images that are on the walls in your room. Another option was um, to consider with bedroom is buying or making a weighted blanket. Now remember weighted blankets are therapeutic heavy blankets that hold you in tight and give you a hug, <laughs> give you a big hug and they calm down the nervous system. Okay, and so they're very helpful for anyone with anxiety, anyone you know, with poor sleep, anyone with restless legs as well. 
Also, you could consider using a white noise app or machine. All right, this is good for anyone that has, lives in a noisy environment or other people that don't like the silence and their mind races. So that's another good option to consider. So let's consider this, write it in your workbook. Do you need to improve your sleeping environment? Now, what strategies would you like to implement? Is it your sheets? Is it your bed? Is it decluttering the bedroom? Is it using a heavy blanket? Is it downloading a white noise app or buying a white noise machine? Cool, once you've answered those questions, let's move on and talk about light and light exposure and how, what changes you could implement to improve your sleep. Remember that exposure to missed time light is one of the most preventable environmental causes of disease. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're getting, using light to our advantage. Darkness stimulates melatonin production, the hormone of sleep, whereas exposure to light stops melatonin production. Okay? And blue light suppresses melatonin the most. And blue light is produced by a lot of the devices around um, in our lives now with computers and phones and, um, and TVs. Okay. So here's a few things that you can consider. So make your bedroom very dark at night. Okay. Either do that, and if you can't do that, use a face mask, an eye mask. Buy and use blue light filtered or red light bulbs in lamps or in your bathroom lighting, okay? If you don't want to replace all your light bulbs, you could buy and use some amber glasses, okay? And put those on two hours before bed. And the other option is using low wattage bulbs in your side lamps in your bedroom. I've sort of said or um, given you options here, okay? All right, so you don't have to do everything, but you're, you know, getting some good options um, across the board. You could buy and use a bright light therapy lamp, okay? And this is definitely important for people with depression and, um, yeah, very good for people with insomnia as well. And especially if you live in a dark environment and when there's not lots of, light and when it's winter time okay if you can't buy a bright light therapy lamp you could use buy wake up lights for the bathroom okay so when you're having your shower in the morning not at night but in the morning you use wake up lights to to um, stimulate your body to know that it's morning time now and finally you could spend some time in the sunshine first thing in the morning to tell your body it's daytime now it's time to stop making melatonin and make some cortisol and give me some energy. And then that'll help tell your body it's morning so that it knows that it's night time um, later in the day. So let's pause and I want to ask you what two strategies are you going to prioritize in the area of light exposure? Okay, you can either pause this video now to continue answering that question or moving on. And let's talk about the diet. Because remember, the food you eat can either be the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. So here's sort of your checklist and things that you want to prioritize in your diet. Okay. Totally eliminate caffeine, right? And that includes chocolate, not just coffee. I want you to eat three main meals throughout the day. Use the plate planner to plan your meals, including protein and healthy carbs. Now here's an option. Have a healthy snack before bed if you wake up early in the morning or you wake up through the night in panic. Okay. 
and in future consider an elimination diet to find potential food chemical intolerances. So which areas of these do you need to make some changes? What are you already doing well? But where are the areas that you need to prioritise when it comes to your eating habits? So you can either pause this video now and continue answering that question in the workbook or move on with me. And finally, we're just going to do talk about some wrap up and some resources too. So remember your resources. There's so much information in that workbook. Um, there's lots of checklists and there's a resources list. So places where you can buy weighted blankets and what um, white noise apps are available or white noise machines are available or red light bulbs or blue light filtered light bulbs or amber sunglasses. I've done the resource list so you don't have to spend hours trying to find what you need. Okay, so there's links in, um, in, the, resource, in the resource book that you can find um, those resources. Okay, we're also going to be doing a 14 day email sleep implementation plan so you can follow along with that too. And finally, um, remember the supplement guide. And the, again, that's going to help you know what supplements to take at what dosages and where to find them. So I just want to ask you, what's three things you will focus on doing differently this week? Let's fill that in your workbook. I know that you've just gone through and highlighted those things in your implementation plan that you want to implement. But let's just start with some fundamentals. What's the three things you're going to focus on doing differently this week? I just wanted to give you our, web, um, our email address, support at Dr. Janelle Sinclair, so that I'd love to hear your feedback about the course, if you have any questions, um, all the positive changes that you're making and the, all the benefits that you're having on, that it's having on your sleep. But I just want to encourage you, we've just talked about all the things that you can implement, but I just want to encourage you to put it into action. You are worth it and your sleep is worth it as it has long-term benefits for your health and for your life right now too. So thanks for joining me in this course. I've, um, I hope you've enjoyed it and I know that you would have got a lot from it and I look forward to hearing from you in the future. Bye there.